that a beaver, to escape the hunter, bites off his testicles or stones. For the LibriVox Coffee Break Collection 11, Science. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Patrick Wallace. Of the Beaver by Sir Thomas Brown, Chapter 4 of the Third Book of Divers Popular and Received Tenants Concerning Animals Which Examined Prove Either False or Dubious, in his Pseudodoxia Epidemica. Of the Beaver That a beaver, to escape the hunter, bites off his testicles or stones, is a tenet very ancient, and hath had thereby advantage of propagation. For the same we find in the hieroglyphics of the Egyptians, in the apologue of Aesop, an author of great antiquity who lived in the beginning of the Persian monarchy and in the time of Cyrus. The same is touched by Aristotle in his ethics, but seriously delivered by Alien, Pliny, and Solinus. The same we meet with in Juvenal, who by an handsome and metrical expression more welcomely engrafts it in our junior memories. Imitatus Castora qui se oinucum ipse facit, cupien se vadere damno testiculorum, adeo medicatum interlegit inguen. It hath been propagated by emblems, and some have been so bad grammarians, as to be received by the name, deriving castor a castrando, whereas the proper Latin word is fiber, and castor but borrowed from the Greek, so called quasi gastor, that is, animal ventricosum, from his swaggy and prominent belly. Herein, therefore, to speak compendiously, we first presume to affirm that from strict inquiry we cannot maintain the evulsion or biting off any parts, and this is declarable from the best and most professed writers. For though some have made use hereof in a moral or tropical way, yet have the professed discourses by silence deserted or by experience rejected this assertion. Thus was it in ancient times discovered and experimentally refuted by one Cestius, a physician, as it stands related by Pliny, by Dioscorides, who plainly affirms that this tradition is false, by the discoveries of modern authors who have expressly discoursed hereon, as Aldrovandus, Matthiolus, Gesnerus, Bellonius, by Olaus Magnus, Peter Martyr, and others who have described the manner of their venations in America, they generally omitting this way of their escape, and have delivered several other by which they are daily taken. The original of this conceit was probably hieroglyphical, which after became mythological unto the Greeks, and so set down by Aesop, and by process of tradition stole into a total verity, which was but partially true, that is, in its covert sense and morality. Now, why they placed this invention upon the beaver, beside the medicable and merchantable commodity of castorium, or parts conceived to be bitten away, might be the sagacity and wisdom of that animal, which from the works it performs, and especially its artifice in building, is very strange, and surely not to be matched by any other. Omitted by Plutarch de Soletia Animalium, but might have much advantaged the drift of that discourse. If, therefore, any affirm a wise man should demean himself like the beaver, who to escape with his life contemneth the loss of his genitals, that is, in case of extremity, not strictly to endeavour the preservation of all, but to sit down in the enjoyment of the greater good, though with the detriment and hazard of the lesser, we may hereby apprehend a real and useful truth. In this latitude of belief, we are content to receive the fable of Hippomanes, who redeemed his life with the loss of a golden ball. And whether true or false, we reject not the tragedy of Absyrtus, and the dispersion of his members by Medea to perplex the pursuit of her father. But if any shall positively affirm this act, and cannot believe the moral, unless he also credit the fable, he is surely greedy of delusion, and will hardly avoid deception in theories of this nature. 
The error, therefore, and allergy in this opinion is worse than in the last, that is, not to receive figures for realities, but to expect a verity in apologues, and believe as serious affirmations, confessed and studied fables. Again, if this were true, and that the beaver in chase makes some divulsion of parts, as that which we call castorium, yet are not the same to be termed testicles or stones. For these cods or follicles are found in both sexes, though somewhat more protuberant in the male. There is here, too, no derivation of the seminal parts, nor any passage from hence unto the vessels of ejaculation. Some perforations only in the part itself, through which the humour included doth exudate, as may be observed in such as are fresh and not much dried with age. And lastly, the testicles properly so called are of a lesser magnitude, and seated inwardly upon the loins. And therefore it were not only a fruitless attempt, but impossible act, to unicate or castrate themselves, and might be an hazardous practice of art if at all attempted by others. Now, all this is confirmed from the experimental testimony of five very memorable authors, Bellonius, Gesnerus, Amatus, Rondolitius, and Matthiolus, who, receiving the hint hereof from Rondolitius in the anatomy of two beavers, did find all true that had been delivered by him, whose words are these in his learned book De Piscibus. Fibri in inguinibus geminus tumores havent, utrinque unicum ovi anserini magnitudine, interhos es mentula in maribus in feminis pudendum, hi tumores testes non sunt, sed follicili membrana contecti, in quorum medio singuli sunt meatus equibus exudat liqua pinguis et carosus, quem ipse castor saepe ad motor ore lambit et exugit, postia velutiolio corporis partes oblinit, Hos tumores testes non esse, hinc maximo colligitur, quod ab ilis nulla est ad mentulam via, neque ductus quo humo in mentulem iatum derivetur, et foras emitatur. Praetereo quod testes intus reperiuntur, eostem tumores mosco, animale inesse puto, equibus odoratum illud plus emanat, than which words there can be no plainer, nor more evidently discovering the impropriety of this appellation. That which is included in the cod or visible bag about the groin, being not the testicle or any spermatical part, but rather a collection of some superfluous matter deflowing from the body, especially the parts of nutrition, as unto their proper emunctories. And as it doth in musk and civet cats, though in a different and offensive odour, proceeding partly from its food, that being especially fish, whereof this humour may be a garrus excretion and olidus separation. Most thereof of the moderns before Rondolitius and all the ancients excepting Cestius have misunderstood this part, conceiving castorium, the testicles of the beaver, as Dioscorides, Galen, Egineta, Aetius, and others have pleased to name it. The Egyptians also failed in the ground of their hieroglyphic, when they expressed the punishment of adultery, by the beaver depriving himself of his testicles, which was amongst them the penalty of such incontinency. Nor is Aetius perhaps too strictly to be observed, when he prescribeth the stones of the otter, or river dog, as succedaneous unto Castorion. But most inexcusable of all is Pliny who, having before him in one place the experiment of Cestius against it, sets down in another that the beavers of Pontus bite off their testicles, and in the same place affirmeth the like of the hyena, which was indeed well joined with the beaver as having also a bag in those parts, if thereby we understand the hyena odorata, or civet cat, as is delivered and graphically described by Castellus, now, the ground of this mistake might be the resemblance and situation of these tumours about those parts wherein we observe the testicles in other animals, which, notwithstanding, is no well-founded elation, for the testicles are defined by their office, and not determined by place or situation, they having one office in all, but different seats in many. For, beside that, 
no serpent or fishes oviparous, that neither biped nor quadruped oviparous, have testicles exteriorly or prominent in the groin. Some also that are viviparous contain these parts within, as beside this animal, the elephant and hedgehog. If any therefore shall term these testicles, intending metaphorically, and in no strict acception, his language is tolerable, and offends our ears no more than the tropical names of plants when we read in herbals of dogs, fox, and goat stones. But if he insisteth thereon, and maintaineth a propriety in this language, our discourse hath overthrown his assertion, nor will logic permit his elation, that is, from things alike to conclude a thing the same, and from an accidental convenience, that is a similitude in place of figure, to infer a specifical congruity or substantial concurrence in nature. End of That a beaver, to escape the hunter, bites off his testicles or stones by Sir Thomas Brown